Okay, so we'll I guess we'll just play it afterwards. But I guess yeah. Justin has called us right now. He's he called us five minutes early, so Well welcome to the Reb Rider show, Justin, and it's a pleasure to have you on with us. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, uh, t- and, and just like I was telling you in the uh, Facebook messages, this is, uh, you know, while it might not be a big deal to you, per se, because okay. you probably have done interviews, you know, for the book and everything, but it's a it's a very big deal to Rev and I because we lo- we literally loved your uncle. And, and, and we're fans. And everything that he has yeah. done. I mean, we're not, we're not like, you know, complete, you know, fan boys or something like that. I'm just like, right. that's all we yeah. think about, but it's like. We just we appreciate and respected everything that your uncle did in his career, so that's why we want well, to have you on. Thank you. I mean, you you are, are really some of the main types of fans that I wrote the book for. I know, uh, you know, Ernest especially has such a, a, an incredible following, and I really wanted to do something special um, and really you know capture everything about Ernest and you know Jim's entire story. Um, I know people were are interested in him and, and what really kind of drove him. You know, so. Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, anyway, uh, we're we're talking with uh, the nephew of uh, Mr. Jim Varney, and all you guys out there at Radio Land should know who Jim Varney is. He's the guy who really is known by his character of Ernest P. Whirl. This is his nephew, uh, Justin Lloyd, who wrote a book called The Importance of Being Ernest, The Life of Actor Jim Varney, stuff Vern doesn't even know. He was nice enough to send us five copies of, of his book, and we're going to be giving the first copy away here this Friday on my show uh, because we're just kind of pressed for time today as far as uh, we got a lot of stuff going on tonight. So we're, we're doing the interview live tonight here. And uh, I want to say, well, I want Reb to say hi to you, Justin. Oh, you bet, Justin. Uh, we really, truly appreciate you sending the books to us. And, yeah, it's my uh, pleasure. You bet. Happy to do it. And uh, it's just an awesome thing. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. Before I got to the studio here i started reading the book and you know what it's one of those books that you can't stop reading so when i get home after the show i'm going to start on that thing and and see how far i get so i just want you to know that well thank you very much i, I really appreciate that it, yeah. it really means a lot it really does so uh let's let's start off the interview uh with the pretty much ask the, uh, the question what kind of gave you the idea to, to say one day i want to write a book about my uncle what kind of inspired that? Um, I tell you, um, one of the main things I remember going through uh, through YouTube and seeing many uh, videos. Um, you know, people would put clips of, of the movies and a lot of earnest commercials and so forth. And and then I would see the comments to the videos, and uh, they were. Just some of the, the the best comments you can imagine, calling Ernest their hero and so many things, and I think that kind of resonated with me as far as um, calling him a hero. I really didn't think of him in, in, uh, Ernest in those terms, and I had my own childhood heroes growing up, and I knew how much they meant to me, like Christopher Reeve, the Superman, and and so forth, and sports heroes, and and that really. Um, kind of grabbed me, I think, in, in wanting to do something that, that really um, his fans could really appreciate. Uh, well, that, that was one of the early kind of inspirations. I'll, t- I'll tell you something. We can tell you're his nephew because you have a, a certain <laughs> tone to you where you sound kind of, kind of like your uncle. <laughs> Thanks. Have you ever been told that? Not not particularly. It, it's interesting, you know, in, in Kentucky... Uh, Lexington is a little more, more, more Midwest since we're closer to like Louisville and Cincinnati. And then of course there's Eastern Kentucky that would sound more like West Virginia and, yeah. and kind of more of the, the typical, I guess people would think the stereotypical, maybe Southern accent. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you do sound like your uncle. <laughs> Thank you. So that's, that's pretty neat in itself. <laughs> And, and, and the the relation uh, as far as uh, him being your uncle is that uh, your mom is his sister. Yes, he, he had three older sisters, and my mom is the third oldest, uh, Sandra. And uh, so I'm one of actually two nephews. The the oldest sister, Joe Gale, she passed away um, many years ago, and, and she also has uh, she had two children. Oh. Um, and then my sec- my uh, other aunt, uh, her name is Janice. She goes by Jake, actually. Um, she has a daughter, and um, she was uh, a real 
help in the book along with my mother. But my my aunt Jake, she stayed at home uh, a bit longer than the other two. Um, she was one of the last to get married, and so she had a lot more memories of Jim at home and and some of the stuff that he did in high school and so forth, and some of his friends. So what? she she was a big help. One of the questions I'd like to ask you mm-hmm. is. Uh, did your uncle have any children to follow in his footsteps whatsoever? Or? No, no he, he, his first marriage, and I, I, I touch upon this a, a, a bit, and I, and I wasn't able to, to get a hold of him. He, he had two stepsons from his first marriage, and they were just a couple years older than me. I, I really only met them once. And um, I wanted, and I tried to get in touch with him to interview them, and, and I I couldn't reach them, so uh, because of that, to kind of protect their privacy and everything, I, I really um, didn't even mention them by name, uh, but uh, just mentioned them a bit in, in the book because I, was, I thought it was you know important to to mention them, and, and they were definitely part of his life, and I think they both he kept in touch with them throughout his life. So, um, well, you know, I'll tell you something about Jim Varney and my perspective of it is that uh, when I first saw him in the commercials, I mean. <laughs> I just I laughed so hard and when I found out that there was a collection of yeah. Jim Varney commercials I went down to the local <laughs> video rental one day and I got them yeah. all and we I I invited people over to the house and we had a Jim Varney party <laughs> and we laughed oh we laughed Jim Varney <laughs> has brightened a lot of people's lives as far as this yeah. reporter is concerned here yes and, and I and I really wanted to, and that's one thing I really also did in, in the book. I, I mentioned really everything that he's really done, and, and, and wanted his fans to know all the different, uh, you know, TV specials or uh, movies or even the, the small budget ones they may not have known about, and now they can go see these and, and, and see all these things he was in and really appreciate, um, you know, his whole career. Well, yeah, and, and, and to me, uh, that that's the, the thing that makes me even more of a fan because, you know, you got all these actors and actresses that are known for certain things, and that's all people know, okay? Yeah. But when you come out with an idea to finally write a book about somebody that's really popular or, or that just, just was that impacted a lot of people, it's nice to hear the backstory. Like, how did it all happen? How did he yeah. get from here to there? You know, I mean, it's just like... Well, I think, Justin, that your uncle would be very pleased if he knew that you had wrote a book in his honor. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I, I and, really and do. I asked myself as I, as I wrote it. I mean, I really tried to, to write it as if he was with me and... and, and um, you know everything that he would be pleased with, and I wanted it to be, uh, you know, something that he liked to talk about um, hunting and so forth. I'm I'm not into guns or hunting or anything like that, you know. But he was, and that was a major part of his life. And um, you know, and if that 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 could perhaps turn off certain people, um, but that that was him. And, and I felt that that you know those types of things. I, I very much wanted to write a book that he may have written about himself. Well, yeah, so it, that, it, that was important to me. It sounds to me that it, it, it's just like he was one of us. Mm-hmm. I think so. I mean, yeah. he was just a, a really kind of a regular guy. Yeah, I mean, he really was. He, yeah. Was, he would call himself a, a blue sh- uh, a blue jeans and t shirt man. You know. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a lot, you know that, that's what I was kind of reading around. You know, even on your site and stuff, and 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 even mm-hmm. all over the fact that he would, you know, when people would come and meet him. He was not an a hole towards people. He was a nice, genuine person. You know how some yeah. people. You know how some people can be like you know rich or, or snobby and not care yeah. about their fans or charge them thirty bucks or an autograph picture or something like that. I think in Jim's right. case, I think he cared so much about his fans where he he didn't want to give up the idea that oh I should be an a hole towards people. No, <laughs> I'm gonna be cool and be just be myself. And I'll tell you something else. When they went yeah. to pick the guy to do Jed Clampett, man, they couldn't have found anybody better than Jim Varney. He was perfect for the role. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I thought he was. And, you know, and he had to to really kind of tone down what he was used to because, you know, he was really the more normal uh, uh, member of that family. You know, you had Granny who was just nuts. and then, Yeah. Uh, so, and, and, I, and I think that was, it was kind of hard for him to kind of tone it down on some occasions, but he, he did a really good job. Um 
you know, and that and I wrote about that, you know, pretty much in depth in the book how you know the director she really fought for him, and of course the studios, like a lot of probably a lot of people in Hollywood, just saw him as Ernest, and she really fought for him, and um, and that's great, and and I think um, one of the other serious contenders that she had this Penelope Spears, uh, she you know she also directed Wayne's World, um, she had mentioned um, Sam Elliott. Who, who actually, you know, was a little bit older, I mean, which would have been more of the Jed Crampett age. Um, but I think when she said what it came down to it was Jim's background in comedy. But, um, but yeah, Sam Elliott would have been, you know, an interesting choice, too. Of course, he was, uh, he was great in what's the, oh, the movie, the bowling movie. He was oh, the Lebo- narrator. Big, but, I mean, Big Lebowski? Yeah, I mean, he's definitely got comedy chops as well. Yeah. He doesn't have quite the background, but he definitely can do some, some good comedy. But, um, well, yeah. But yeah, so that was... <laughs> yeah, he has a background more like in, in all the Western movies, pretty much. Right, like, right, yeah. right. That's probably why he would be chosen for that if, if he yeah. were in. But I'll tell you what, the part, and I I just reviewed the movie here, and I hadn't seen it since it first came out, but the part that stays with me <laughs> is yeah. when the bad guys cut him off in the truck and pull the gun, and he says, and this is what I carry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the movie, man. <laughs> that was a great start to the movie. Yeah. Oh man! But uh, for the, for those are, who are tuned in right now here on the Red Rider Show special edition, uh, well, it's Rally Week, of course, and we're we're not talking about the rally right now here in here in South Dakota. We're talking about Jim Varney, and we got Jim Varney's nephew Justin Lloyd, who wrote a book, and we're talking about the book, and we're talking to Justin about his uncle, the late great Jim Varney, and uh, basically, it's it's just a pleasure to have you on, and, and you know. I could I could talk to you for hours upon hours, but we'll we'll try to keep it slim here for you because I know that's it's late fine, over that's there. Fine. Where where are you at right now, Justin? I'm just outside of Lexington. It's okay uh, that in uh, Kentucky. We, we pronounce it around here. We pronounce it Versailles. Versailles. It's an, <laughs> named after the uh, French city Versailles. Have you have you ever been to South Dakota? No, I have not actually. Well, you need to come out and check out Mount Rushmore before your time is up because if yeah. you if yeah. you've never seen it, it's something to behold. I'm and, sure it is. And if you're a bi- if you're a biker, come to the rally. It'll yeah. Stir- yeah. Stir- yeah. yeah, if you're a motorcycle <laughs> enthusiast, show up. <laughs> Only about twenty five miles away from here, from Rapid City. We do have the book in the studio and we've been looking through it and it it looks like a real awesome book and I can't wait to start reading it. So what, what I'm amazed about is just the fact that, you know, it, it's a very thick book. I mean, I, yeah. I knew it was going to be thick when I read how many pages it was, but it, it has a lot of information, and I think people would definitely love to, to pick it up. Uh, what, what I'm kind of wondering is, like, uh, when it came to getting the archive of pictures, because I know it's in the middle of the book, and I don't mm-hmm. want to give too much away to anybody that hasn't seen it, but in the middle yeah. of the book, there are some very cool, rare pictures where, mm-hmm. how did you, uh, did you just get them from family members, or did uh, did you have to, like, get them from, a, you know, did you have to get the earnest stuff from the movie producers or or whatever, or how did that happen to get all the pictures? Well, uh, the, the fa- family has quite a bit of, of, of pictures, and I'll, and I'd to, I, you know, put credit on, on each of those to, to say where they're at from, Um it basically, you know, I, I just researched this. I mean, I, 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 it took me over five years of writing and researching, and I really just... That's dedication, uh, for sure. I mean, yeah. just a, a complete dedication. I was just so much into this book, um, and I was able to find people. Uh, one of my favorite pictures, um, and you can probably tell it takes up the whole page, is the picture of him from the exit in. And I was able to find the person who took that picture to, to give me permission to use it, and um, that was just a, a, a great picture. Um, one, one of the biggest finds was actually um, someone who who had been really a family friend, um, but we hadn't really uh, had many really any contact with this person for for many many years, and I'd never met him. Still haven't met him in person. His name is Joe Lyles. And this is an old friend of Jim's and his first manager. And um, he's the one that really um, got him going with stand-up down in Nashville and moved out to Los Angeles with him and helped him to really um, um, get going in in Hollywood. Um, And he just, at one point, sent me a whole box full of things, of, of old contracts and pictures. And 
he's the one that sent me the picture that's on the, the cover of the book. Uh-huh. And um, he he was a huge uh, uh, a huge source of information. What and I uh, quoted him quite a bit in the book. What what is your favorite memory of your uncle? Do you, I'm sure you got to have one. Um, it's probably the, the many uh, one time. Uh, one time I knew I could count on seeing him every year was on Christmas Eve. That's when my mother's family was celebrated at Christmas was Christmas Eve, and my father's was Christmas morning. So that always worked out really well. So on Christmas Eve, we would either get together at uh, my family's house or one of my aunt's houses here in Lexington, and um, he would always show up, usually a little later. He'd usually been visiting friends in the area and then come over later. And, I mean, he just would just kind of hold court in the kitchen or wherever, and I mean, he just entertained and we're talking from just doing voices and stories and pulling out, you know, his collection of knives or watches or jewelry. And just, I mean, he, it was just um, magical. Well, and, you answered uh, all my questions. My next <laughs> one was going to be, was he kind of like the life of the party? or? And it's yeah. not, it sounds like he was the center of attention. And, of course, you know, when, yeah. you, when you watch all the commercials and anything he's in, he, he does command attention when he's work, working, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he was just purely just entertaining. Whether yeah. it was kind of showing you something, or kind of wanting to teach you something, or um, just some kind of funny story or imitation of someone, he would imitate Johnny Cash and <laughs> other characters and, and so forth. And I so, can imagine. Um, and, and that was the thing I discovered, you know, with the book. I, I never knew some of the the backstory of some of these characters and where they originated. And Joe Lyles helped to to to. Um, uh, talk about those types of things and, and how those came about some of his uh, various characters and, and I try to I really try to put all that in the book because so much of this was a journey for me as well and, and so I, I just kind of take the reader on on the journey that I've been on the last five or six years and um, is, is really something what a, what I kind of find impressive there Justin is the fact that uh, you know your uncle was also you know he as much as he did a lot of stuff on television and commercials and everything he also did some rare singing. And, I mean, I'm yeah. really amazed by some of the stuff that I found on YouTube, and I'm all into the rare stuff. I'm not into the top 40 stuff like I used to be. And yeah. I like playing that stuff. I play that stuff on the radio. I play that, I play that uh, even though it's, like, probably a, a crappy quality cr- uh, copy, but it's uh, uh, of that song, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, jeez, now I'm driving a freaking blank now. Uh, remember that song that we played last week? I do, and it escapes me also. Yes. So, <laughs> well, I know he did. You know, he did the song for the Beverly Hillbillies movie, The Hot Rod Lincoln. Well, we played that. Oh, one, but, yeah, but we that did. Wasn't the one yeah. I was thinking. I think it's called "Time Waits for No One." Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that was a song him and a, a buddy of his wrote, and you know, when he because of course he lived, you know, most of his life, or, or well, about almost twenty years of his life, just north of Nashville in a small town called White House. It's just north of Nashville. Yeah. So he had a lot of friends in Nashville, and and he really um, was kind of an aspiring singer. He 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 was always trying to put together an album, and it, and it's really pretty funny that it was the only time he really had a song on any kind of album was in in Hollywood. It was part of the the the, the movie soundtrack for 20th Century Fox, and so I thought that was pretty ironic. Here he was in Nashville. He made movies in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. He, he gets a song on an album in Hollywood. I mean, it's just the opposite. That was pretty funny. One thing about yeah. your uncle, though, in the short period of time that he was around, he left his mark. And he, yeah, yeah, he, he uh, did. I mean, you know, he died young, but I mean, he he really lived, you know, how he wanted to, and yeah. he really just he did everything I think he, he wanted, and um, he. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say, you know, he kind of burned the candle at both ends. But he, he lived a couple lifetimes in one, I think. A lot of people would probably agree. <laughs> so what do you think he would be doing right now if he was still, I mean, he'd probably be, what, about 65 right now, maybe, or 66? Or no, I suppose he'd be 65 Yeah, right he now. would have turned 65 in, uh, um, in June. And what so, do you yeah. think, he, do you think he'd still be in the film industry? I mean, more likely? I, I think so. Um, Make a couple of earnest comebacks, probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I I don't know if he would have maybe become more interesting. In maybe writing. I don't. I don't know about directing, but maybe writing something or still trying to do something with some music. I think. Um, he, I, I think he would have made at least one more, one or two more earnest films. I think he would have. 
Because the fans, yeah. so, and then he probably would have. Might have even made another Beverly Hills Billy's movie for yeah. all we know. The thing is, he yeah. probably would have even went to a couple Comic Cons because you know he's a pop <laughs> right. icon. Yeah, yeah. If Pee Wee Herman can do it, so can he. You know. <laughs> yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of it. Uh, did you ever see a lot of comparison between Pee Wee Herman and, and uh, or Pee Wee's Playhouse and uh, and uh, Hey Vernus Ernest because they kind of competed head to head on the same network on CBS back in yeah. the eighties. Yeah, 88, yeah. Yeah. Did you see some competition between the two, like even to this day, kind of, looking back at it, kind of? I, I, su- I suppose. I mean, because, um, you know, I, I enjoyed, you know, some of the Pee Wee stuff as well. I think a lot of people, I think where the comparison is, you know, a lot of people like with Pee Wee Herman, and especially the fact that, you know, at least Jim would show up some places as himself where it seemed like Pee Wee Herman was always in character no matter what, and you're always just wondering, well, who, what is he really like? Does he ever, yeah. is he ever out of character? Sure. And, um, and, and, and Jim, I mean, he, he did show up in, in character quite a bit places, and I know that was, made him even more of an enigma of, of what he was really like. Um, oh, but, abs- um, absolutely. No, it's it, it, it just kind of it's just kind of neat just because to to find out all this key information because uh, I mean yeah, yeah I mean I you still should read the book anyway just because yeah. you know you're gonna learn so much and uh, I love knowledge especially obscure knowledge like this and iconic knowledge yeah. to top it off <laughs> yeah and and also some of the people he you know he was uh, associated with you know like his friendship with Johnny Cash and. And a lot of the, the big names in country music, and you know, he was good friends with Billy Bob Thornton, and um, so that 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 really, you know, so I'm a I'm a huge movie fan myself, and and that kind of blows my mind, you know, uh, uh, some of the people he worked with, uh, and some of the actors and so forth. It's um, you know, and I, I never got a chance to meet um, really any of them, but um, so that that was really something. Thinking that all these people he got to work with. I mean, even going back to this this really failed uh, TV series back in 1980 called Pink Lady and Jeff. You know, he worked with Sid Caesar on the show at one point with a guest host or a guest star. I mean, it, it just was unbelievable the people he, he came in contact with through his career. It's kind of too, it's too bad he never did, like, a movie with, like, John Candy or Chris Farley. Or I think he I think he would have had a good yeah. chemistry with those two. Yeah, yeah. Um he, you know that that cast of um, you know Beverly Hillbillies is pretty pretty packed with stars. I mean, yeah, oh yeah, uh, that that was quite. Uh, and you know, one of my favorite movies was was Nine to Five. I love that movie, and oh, you kind of had a, a small reunion. You know, Dolly Parton had a little cameo, and then you had Lily Tomlin and Dabney Coleman in that movie too. Oh, sure. So that was kind of funny. But, um, and it's hard to believe it's been twenty one years since that movie came out. Man, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, we're all getting old. I mean, I, I was probably, what, about nine or ten at that time, probably? I don't know, but I, I've been a fan of the Beverly Hillbillies ever since they hit. And when yeah. that movie came out and I found out Jim Varney was in, I went to yeah. the theater to view it. Yeah. And I came away. It, I mean, they couldn't have picked a better Jethro in there, and Granny was perfect. And, I mean, they yeah. were all... And, 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 I uh, thought she looked so much like her. Oh, too, yeah, she, she did. Was, oh, you bet great. you. And uh, even Lily Tomlin did a heck of a job as Jane Hathaway. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And because uh, I remember uh, the one who played Granny, uh, Cloris, Cloris Leachman. Yeah. She also, yeah. I remember seeing her the in the first film that I ever remember watching as a kid was Walk Like a Man with Howie Mandel, Christopher okay. Lloyd. Oh, yeah. That's like goes way back to like 1987. Well, she had Granny down. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But... Uh, uh, just a couple more questions to kind of sure. ask you. Uh, what are like uh, what like for for somebody who's a, a real fan of Jim Varney who thinks they know everything about Jim Varney? What do you recommend about your book? Why do you think people should uh, read your book or go out and buy your book and read it? Why why what point are do you think that you you're trying to make as far as your book goes? Well. That's probably a, a tough question. question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. I mean, it lets you know. Um, one of the interesting things for me was was understanding Ernest. I think that that whole story about well, he was a TV person and he went to movies. Uh, the the whole Ernest uh, phenomenon uh, was for the time uh, really. Um, 
pretty incredible the way they marketed the character and they went market to market and he was really kind of all over the country um, just slowly kind of a slow invasion of just doing market to market never doing a national ad and they literally did thousands of commercials and um, and just the way the character worked and, and, and you know I always thought that you could almost do a whole book on, on that and, and almost like as an for an advertising type kind of book almost and it was something you know you you couldn't do now because with with the advent of the internet and something like YouTube, you know, you could upload any video to YouTube and then it goes viral. Uh, but then, of course, that didn't happen back then, so they could kind of slowly work their way all around, and and so it didn't it didn't burn out very quickly at all. And so that was that was really interesting to me, and, and I tried to present that in a way that didn't get too boring or anything, but. Um, uh, the, that that was interesting, and, and and then the way he you know he wrestled with the character and, and um, just the, kind of the psychological part of that, where where he um, I think he kind of underestimated just how entrenched he he be, had become as a character and how hard that was going to be to break away, and um, that's another thing that I really took some time in, in kind of writing about and. And the well, people it, he compared himself to. I'll tell you to, what it's but, obvious is that you loved your uncle, and it's a heck of a tribute to write a book to him. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's what became bittersweet because, you know, I find so much out about him. And, of course, the first thing I find myself wanting to do is talk to him about about those things. And, yeah. of course, he's not there. And where well, I was finding out so many interesting things. And um, I think I gained more sympathy for him and his journey early on and, um, and just, you know, the, the type of... Um, uh, you know, the, the fight you have to have when you're an actor. It, it, you know, you you, uh, you know have so many parts that you, you get turned down for in Broadway, and you just have to keep uh, you know to persevere and, and well, keep fighting on. Even in scanning the book right now, I found a little piece in there where he was such a hit that Dan Rather at the time was doing yeah. the CBS News, and they had viewed a commercial. Well, when Dan yeah. Rather came back on the air, he had tears in his eyes, and he said, yeah. sometimes we lose it because they were laughing hysterically at Ernest. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought that was pretty neat in your book. Yeah, and so the same thing, kind of same thing happened with uh, uh, Tom Brokaw. And, and that's probably one of the very the funniest things I've ever seen him do. At the beginning of the NBC News piece with Tom Brokaw, they show him, in this full Shakespeare attire on stage doing a, a scene from uh, Hamlet. Yeah. And then it goes into all the earnest stuff. And then at the end of the whole, at the end of the whole piece, it comes back to him doing, doing a Hamlet there on stage. And, um, he's, he's doing this whole soliloquy or something. And then he looks down at the camera and he goes, you know what I mean, Burn? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that yeah. quantum leap from, from Shakespeare to earnest in that, short period i mean that was really just and of course tom brokaw totally cracked up and that that was that was great so well we want to say thank you personally uh justin for just everything not just for for being a cool guy sure. letting us interview <laughs> you but uh for sending us the books we're gonna do our sure. best to do a pretty fun giveaway try to do some jim varney trivia and once we start okay. reading the book and everything <laughs> i think uh and we're going to test out some uh radio <laughs> listeners and see if they really know the real Jim Vardy, <laughs> like like we're trying to know. And Justin, yeah. we truly appreciate having you on our My show. Uh, and you have a. It looks like what's a fantastic book here, and we're certainly going to plug it for you. And, and uh, just so we can get that plug in there, where can people uh, buy this book at? Uh, probably the the best uh, easiest place is probably Amazon dot com, and there's the the ebook, and also the the paperback. So. Um, awesome. They've been uh, the the list price on the paperback is twelve ninety nine, but uh, they've been carrying it for just under ten dollars for almost a month now. So now is uh, is the money being donated to something, or just are you? I mean, like, is it taking care of you financially, or how does that kind of work as an author? Yeah, right now, I mean, uh, it's, it's going to me at the at the moment, and I, I've thought about that. I've thought about perhaps do- donating a portion of it at some call, you know, at some point to, to you know, like uh, cancer research, yeah. something like that. I mean, that's definitely a, a, was a thought. Well, yeah, I mean, you deserve to get a little something, too. I mean, you, <laughs> you, you bet. Spent you all did the time. work. Yeah. Doggone right. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
But you know, come up with an idea of the Jim Varney charity or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, any last things you want to say to the listeners out there about your I book? I just, uh, you know, I hope that uh, people check it out and, and, and enjoy it, and, and really, um, there, there's a lot that, that's in there, and um, you know, and and I think uh, as I wrote it, you know, obviously uh, it, Jim's life came to an early uh, sad ending, but overall the book is, um, you know, I made it upbeat and funny because I thought really Jim spent his life uh, making people laugh, and if there was sure. going to be a book about him, it, it should do the same thing. So. You know, overall, it's it's a it's a trying to make it a funny, upbeat, uh, interesting read, and so I hope I've done that. So. Oh, I think you have, and I think people will enjoy the book. It's called "The Importance of Being Earnest: The Life of Actor Jim Varney." Stuff that Vern doesn't even know, and it's available now where books are sold. Right, and the right. author is Justin Lloyd, and we were really honored to have him on the show tonight with us. So thanks very much, sir, Justin, and we appreciate Thank it more than you know. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, you have a good night. There you have it, Justin Lloyd, 